Welcome back to the channel. In our previous video, our custom theme is able to add different products by clicking the Add to Cart just to add a single product. And when we go to our variable products like pizza and click this little plus sign, we're able to get a model that allows us to add individual items to the cart by clicking that little link. But this is not the best way we can use our theme. We should be able to just check these different items and then have a button here that adds all these different pieces in one go. That would be a better approach to using or having inside our own theme. So what I'm going to do is make this work and if you want to do that, please join me in the coding of the video. So let's open up our editor and we shall be able to see where we were in the theme. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make a little bit of cleanup and make sure everything is working as it should be. So, so you'll see that we have a model title here, we have these individual pieces, I'm going to change these so that we can have something a little bit better. So the way we do that is by going to our Add to Cut inside our WooCommerce and we're going to go to the loop and we shall go to add to cut.php and inside here I'm just going to choose the product slug for one and I'm going to change it here where we have the model title. So I'm going to paste this PHP here and what I'm going to do is do a string replace and when I use string replace it expects, the first item it expects is the dashes that I'm going to have, I'm going to substitute those with the space and then I need to of course pass the string that I'm working with right here, so I'll close this off so that it doesn't break, of course we need the semicolon here and then remove this one that's happening here, then the next thing that we are going to do, we're going to come down here and we're going to remove this extra piece of content that we have here, so I'm going to just cut this and save the file, then I'll come back and reload this. Let's go back to our pizza, click the plus sign and you'll see that we now have barbecue steak pizza showing up here and then we can choose the different items from here. Same thing will happen if we go to margarita, we have all of this showing up here. We don't have those little links that we're adding the individual items. Now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to change a bit of the HTML structure that we have in here. So for all this part where we are having all our content, we're actually going to have a form, so I'm going to close this off, HTML with a form, and then I'm going to open up a form above here. So we'll have a form that's going to have an action that's empty, and then we're going to say, we want this form to have an ID, so I'm just going to give it the product slug, so we'll have PHP here, we'll click echo and we're going to use the product slug, of course I need to add and make this an arrow, and then we'll add a semicolon here and save this, we need to have that ID and the next thing we need to do is have a method, and the method that we're going to add here is a get method, and then we'll close off our form right here. Now after adding our form, I'm going to just tab this inside, and then just before we close off our form, we're going to have a button, and our button will have an ID of food add button, that will be its ID, I'll add that, and then inside this button I'm going to add an attribute of form that will allow us to choose which individual form we want to actually work with. The reason I'm doing this is because when we go back to our particular theme, you'll see we have barbecue pits and we have margarita, and all those are having their individual models and their individual forms. So if we are looping through each one of those, we shall need to have a particular form that we are targeting when we are doing our JavaScript. So I'm going to give it a form and the form is going to just echo the same thing that we used up, so we'll be using product slug, semicolon right there, and we'll say the button is a type of submit. So in between our button here we're going to say add to cut, using PHP I can actually translate this so that it can work with WordPress in terms of translation, so I'll add PHP underscore E 
that will allow us to echo at the same time also translate this. So we shall add our text domain for our theme which I just need to get from our style.css and it's actually just techy food so I'm going to come here and add techy food and then I'll save this. So let's go back and look at the HTML we have, I'll reload what we have here and on reload you'll see that we have this, I'll go to pizza, click our plus sign, we now have this one button and we're going to inspect it, right down here you'll see we have ID of that, we have a form.barbecuepizza, it's a submit type, and this is inside our form, so you can see if you click our form, we have our form of barbecue pizza, steak pizza, and everything is working out well. The only issue we have here is that the ID and the names and the values of these particular items are their names, so we're going to change that also into their IDs, and what I mean by that is we need to get this full name, I'll get all the different instances it has, and then I'm going to change that into what we have as the product variation ID, so I'll just copy this variation ID and then replace right here. So I'm going to save this only leaving the full name to be equaled inside the label itself, so I'm going to come back here, reload our front page, and then I'll go to pizza, and then I'll click this little plus button and I'll just inspect under the hood to see what we have for each one of these, and you'll see the input now has an ID of 24, it has a proper name of 24 and we have a value of 24. This will make it very easy for us as we are selecting the particular fields that have actually been chosen or selected as we use our JavaScript. So this looks nice and I think we are now ready to start working on the particular button that we have here. So I'll go back to the code, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file in our JavaScript folder, which we're going to call foodadd.js, and then we're going to have to enqueue this particular JavaScript inside our functions. So I'll come back to our functions right here, and then use this enqueue script that we have here. What we are looking at doing is having something similar to what we have here, so I'll copy this, come back down here and paste it. Now this JavaScript is going to be of course with taking food add as an ID, I'll change this here, and then we'll get it from our directory style sheet, of course inside assets and inside JavaScript, right here we have food add dash js, so we'll have food dash add dot js, it's going to be dependent on JavaScript, on jQuery, and the jQuery we want to use is not this slim, because we want to use the Ajax, whenever you use the slim version of jQuery, you don't have the particular dot Ajax function inside it, and we shall see where that problem comes in. So for now we're going to add the version of one, and then we shall say let it be enqueued inside our footer. So in order to tackle the issue of performance, we know that this particular JavaScript is going to be added on every page that we load, but we only want it to only load right here in this section. So what I'm going to do is go back to the code and say, since we are working on our front page, we just need to add a new rule and say if we are on the front page, or if we are not on the front page, then we don't return that particular JavaScript, so we'll say is front page, so we can use that default WordPress function that helps to check that we are on the front page, then we shall load this particular JavaScript, so I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to of course come back, and then we're going to look at our network key, and then I'll reload here with a hard reload, and you're going to see that we now have a food-add.js loading right here, so what we are going to do in our food.add is we're going to use our console log a lot more, and the first thing that we shall do inside our food-js is we're going to introduce jQuery, we'll say jQuery, and we're going to check if the document is ready, 
So then we'll add on the function of ready. If our document is ready, then we're going to run a function where we have a dollar sign saying let this reference of jQuery be replaced by this dollar sign. So in every instance where we have the dollar sign, we'll know that we're referencing jQuery inside there. We'll close this off very well by adding that semicolon at the end. And then inside here we're going to say let's look for, so we'll use the dollar sign, and we're saying let's find that target where we're having the ID of food-add-btn. So we're going to put this in our quotations so that we are now targeting the particular button and we'll say if we have this being clicked then we shall run a particular function. And that function is going to get all the information inside the element of E. So we're going to run this function and this function is going to get all the particular information about the click event and then the first thing that we shall do is say e prevent default to prevent default running of the button whenever it is clicked and then what we're going to do is just console log dot log we're just going to console log everything that comes in through the e so I'm going to save this and then let's go back reload this of course sometimes you have to do a hard refresh And we'll click this and you'll see every time that we click this we get this event being loaded and if I inspect this object you'll see that we are current target that we have is our button of food add.btn and that form and the type is that. Now inside it you're going to get the current target and you'll see that you have a number of items being shown in here and when we scroll down you'll actually see that where we're getting this particular click is in this parent node of barbecue steak form. So I'll now go to the margarita pizza, click that plus sign, then click add. When I click here, you see we're not having this event triggering, and that is simply because we are doing very bad HTML by adding a, an ID right here. We need to change this into a class so that it can be applied to any of the buttons that have that going through, and then we're going to change from this pound into a class. So we're saying anytime we find a button with that class and we click it, please get the event that is being saved and then add it to our console log. So I'm going to come back here, hard refresh, we go back to pizza, we click this item, click add, you'll see that is being logged, close that, let me go to margarita, when I click add, you'll see that is being opened. So let's first open the first two, you'll see we're having the barbecue pizza being clicked on, and if I go to the last one you'll see that we're working with the margarita pizza, and that is what we need. So the next thing that I'm going to do is inside this object I'm going to get the current target, and inside the current target I'm also going to look for the parent element which is this, and we shall look for the individual inputs or the individual items that are actually being ticked on and checked in here. So the first thing we shall do is come back to our code, and now what we're going to do, instead of logging E, we shall just have form submitted as a string to show us every time we click the event, and then inside here I'm just going to say let's get the form that has been selected, so I'll say var or variable form selected, I'm going to store it and say e dot current target dot parent element, and of course I'm going to put that semicolon there, we'll save that as a variable. So down here let's get a variable, and that variable is going to be called values, and values will equal to an array number one, that's going to come from, and inside this, I'll put a semicolon first, we're going to say get document dot query selector all, so we're going to say let's get all the individual items inside our document, and we're going to look for the input, so this needs to be in single quotes, we are looking for the input, 
and the input is going to be a type of checkbox type equals and then we're going to look for those that are actually checked so after doing that we're going to say let's chain on a map function so we want to get an array of all these items so in this map function we're going to say we'll get the item and that particular item we're going to get the item dot value so we're going to actually get the value of that selected I'll just right click this to inspect it to see where we're going with this so we're going to check for all the input fields and we're going to get the value of those checkboxes that have actually been ticked that's what we are saying in this long line of code right here. So we're going to get the value and then we're going to store it as an array called values. So let me console log the values that we have and then we shall be able to see what's happening. I'll also console log the form selected so that you can know that we are doing the right thing. So I'll come back to the front end, I'll hard reload this, we'll scroll down to pizza, of course looking inside our console, I'll click this plus symbol, you see nothing happens when I trigger the add to cart, our form is submitted and the array is empty, but when I click on these two items, three, I'll click add, you'll now see that we have the form submitted and inside our array it is empty, and I'll come back to our code to see where the error is and it's just because here we chained on checked yet we're supposed to use a full colon so I'll come back here give it a hard reload when I come to pizza and then choose margarita for example click add the array will be empty you have nothing in there but we have the correct form if I choose to add small and medium extra cheese click add you will now see that we're having our array being populated with 15 and 18 as the IDs. I'll close this, come back to barbecue steak pizza and add a large pepperoni, olives and extra cheese. Click this, you'll now see that we have 30, 31, 32, 15 and 18 all being added. So let's go back to our code in here and we say we're getting the right thing that we needed, we're getting the correct form being selected and we're getting the right value being added. So inside here we are going to just comment it out, and then we're going to come here and say we're going to use Ajax as a function in here with a semicolon, I'll open it up, and inside our Ajax we're going to use a particular URL because we need to be pinging the right thing, I'll add a comma here, we need to add a type, and the type we are doing right now is a post, this needs to be in quotations as well, and then we need to add when we have a success, what happens? So we'll have a function right here and say in here we need to pass a response, and the response will be of success, we'll have a function when that is done, and then we need to also find out what happens when we have an error. So I'll add an error there and then I'll say ERR for error, and inside each individual one of these I want to console log, and the console log we're going to have is a raise in here, I'll duplicate this, move this down and then in here we're going to console log the error that we get in case we don't have things that are happening right. So after doing that let's work on our URL, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to copy what we need to have here. So you realize that every time we want to add on something into our cart, let's say when you go to salads and click add to cart, our page reloads with a particular ID of that. If we add apple green salad, you'll see that what's changing is only the ID here, so I'm going to copy the URL from here, copy it, come back inside here and I'll paste it as this. This needs to be dynamic for all the different items. So what we're going to do here is say for each one of those values, so we'll use a for each function, and we're going to say for each one of these values in here, 
we need to say for each one of them we'll get the element, the element is going to be that individual value, so I'll say let's change this to value, or it can remain as element, it doesn't matter, I will move the code into the loop up here, we're going to run what we have here, and we're going to say the URL is actually going to be equal to that, and then we're going to use the plus symbol and we're going to say let's reference the value, so that we can look through each ID that we actually have from our cut. So we'll save that, let's come back right here, we'll reload this afresh, we're going to come back to pizza, you see nothing happens when we go to margarita, choose large olives, of course if I inspect this, we're going to see that we're targeting the one of 20, I'll go back to the console, click add, you'll see that we have form submitted and then we have Ajax is not function, now of course we get this error here saying Ajax is not a function, because Ajax is not supposed to be second rate in here, it's supposed to be outside these fields. Now of course this is not going to work just looping through the values, and then just doing an Ajax function or a post of some sort, so we need to find an alternative method that helps us to loop through each one of these values, then makes a post request to this URL, of course including this value. So we can either choose to use PHP or we can still try to do it inside our JavaScript by using things that are native, for example using a fetch function in here, or trying to do a JavaScript post. Now this video has become a little bit long, in the next video I'm going to show you how to properly handle Ajax inside WordPress, so let's stay tuned for the next video, if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more of this please let me know in the comment section of what you want to see tackled or how you want to operate with all of this, and don't forget to share with your friends, don't forget to subscribe because on this channel we share WordPress solutions to help you in your everyday business, Otherwise, enjoy your day.